Hello, welcome to yet another MQTT demo. This time I'm going to show you how to use the generic MQTT client in Crimson 3.1 uh, to get data to the MQTT client from Kepware. Now, because they're both clients, we're going to need a broker to sit in the middle. And the one we're going to use is ActiveMQ uh, from Apache. So let's go to their website and look how we can download that. So we're going to go to the uh, link here that I will include in the description. And we're going to download the Windows distribution, which comes in this big zip file. Okay, so the file has downloaded. So let's go get that out of the Downloads folder. And I'm going to go put it into a uh, folder that I've created on my Q drive. So I'm just going to paste it into there. And then I'm going to open a command prompt at that location. So there's my command prompt. And and there's our file. Now I've also got a little bit of XML here that I'm going to have to paste into the configuration uh, script for this package uh, in order to provide some default usernames and passwords. I'm going to quickly open this in Notepad. I'm going to put that on my clipboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unzip the package. I'm going to use 7-zip to do that. As you can see, as this is scrolling by, or maybe you can't see it on the video, but there's a lot of JR files here uh, because this is a Java application. So you will need the Java runtime environment installed, which I've already done. So we're going to go into that directory. Under there, we have a directory called conf. And in there, we are going to notepad activemq.xml. And there's a couple of changes we're going to make in here. The first, as I said, is we're going to come in here just before the end of the broker section, and we're going to paste this little plugin section uh, that provides uh, what they call simple authentication. And this is creating three users for us. Uh, the first user is called uh, System and has a password of Manager, and he's a user and an admin. Then we have one called User and Password, who is just a user, and Guest and Password, who is just a guest, and that's all great. And then I'm going to go up here to this line, and this is something you probably won't need to do, but uh, the MQTT connector is using port 1883. I'm going to change that to 5883, uh, just because I have so many MQTT things running on this PC that port 1883 is already busy. So that's all the config. And now we can come out a level, and we're going to go bin uh, activemq.bat start. And now the broker is running. So now we've got it running, let's get rid of that, and let's go into Crimson and get Crimson to push some data to it. So using an edge controller, I'm going to do my usual setup, four numeric tags, onto the display page, take the tags, drag them onto here, make them a little bit bigger, space them out, make that one data entry, make that one data entry, go into the properties, and on update, I'm going to implement tag three and tag four. Let's go into communications, give myself a little quick name so I can use the uh, zero config network setup. Go into the web server, it's already enabled, but enable remote control. Let's F9 that down to the unit. And back into our web browser and HTTP, mqtt.local. There's our web browser, and sure enough, there's our data, and we can enter it. So. That's a quick skeletal database we've set up that contains some tags. So let's go into communications and let's use our generic MQTT driver to push those into the broker. So we're going to enable it. The IP address of this PC happens to be that. We're going to use the default subscription and publication topics, but we are going to drop the dollar sign. Uh, ActiveMQ doesn't like dollar signs at the beginning of topics. Some things do, some things don't. Uh, the username, as we saw, is going to be system and manager. Network settings, we're going to change this to port 5888 because, as I said, we uh, port 188, sorry, 5883 because 1883 is already occupied. And under tag data, every 0.1 of a second, I am going to publish changes to these tags. And I'm also going to get it to force an update every 20 seconds. So whether the tags change or not, they'll be sent every 20 seconds. And that's useful um, when we're setting up Kepware, as you'll see in a bit. So let's squirt that down. And now we can go and see if they've appeared in the broker. To do that, we use a little web interface that ActiveMQ provides on port 8161 of localhost. We can go into manage here. We'll put our admin and admin. This is the default username and password. And under topics now, look, we can see there are two topics that have appeared. There are these system topics, but here are two. One is Crimson Generic Device 01 Pub. 
nobody listening to that topic, but look, lots of subscriptions going on, and that is the edge control of publishing tag data. And then we can see Crimson Generic Device 01 Sub, and you can see that there's one subscriber, one consumer of that, and that is indeed the edge controller waiting for rights. Now, ActiveMQ uh, fettles these names a little bit. If there were slashes in them, it converts them to dots. So that's really Crimson slash generic slash device 01 slash pub. And that's important. We'll need to know that when we're setting up uh, Kepware. So this is working. Let's go into Kepware and set that up. So to set up Kepware, let's go into their configuration utility. And we're going to add a new channel. Let's clear all this stuff out so we can see things as they happen. We're going to add a new channel, and it's going to be on the TCP client. And we just call it channel 1. We're not going to do anything important there. We are going to talk to 5883 on localhost, and we're going to use system and manager. Oops, hold on, let's type that. Manager for username and password, and the rest of this we can leave at defaults. So now we can add a device. So device 1, all default here. Uh, but when we go into the properties of this, this is where it gets a bit more interesting. Let's go into tag generation. And what this uh, is going to do is it's going to listen on a particular topic, and it's going to listen for tags that are being published, and it's going to create uh, tags within Kepware that correspond to those tags inside the MQTT packets. Now, uh, because typically you're sending only changes, uh, it will listen for a certain amount of time to make sure that it gets all the tags. Uh, and that's why I went in and set uh, Crimson to publish the tags anyway every 20 seconds. Uh, once we've got it up and running, we can get rid of that because then we'll just send change. So let's go in and put our topic, and let's fettle it back to what it should be with the slashes. Um, that's fine. And let's click on Create Tags. Now, this is going to go on for about a minute listening for changes, and every time it hears a change uh, to a tag value, it's going to go and create a tag within Kepware to hold that data. So let's just let it run and see what it comes up with. Now, uh, by the magic of video editing, that passed rather more quickly. Uh, but we know it's completed because if we look down here in the log window, we can see a line, tag generation results, nine tags created. And up here in the Explorer, we can see crimson device, crimson tags have appeared under device. So let's close this. Crimson generic device 01 pub. And look, here are our tags. And there's also the device data, uh, you know, cellular data and uh, location data and stuff, which we don't actually publish right now, but is in there as a sort of pre-beta placeholder. So let's go into our quick client. And sure enough, whoops, uh, the kept server is just going to keep beeping, unfortunately, because um, uh, when you haven't paid the license fee, they make you suffer by beeping at you every few minutes. So if you keep hearing that noise, that's what's going on. But the interesting thing is... If we scroll out here long enough so we can see the names, next to tag four, look, we have the data coming over from our device. And if we were to go back a couple of clicks back to the web server, we can see, sure enough, just off the edge of the screen, that corresponds. If we go in and do data entry here and set this to one, two, three, four, uh, then sure enough, one, two, three, four appears here. So it's as simple as that. It's very easy. Let's go to that beep again. It's very easy just to set up the broker. Uh, to have Crimson push the data into the broker and to have Kepware subscribe to the broker to receive the updates. Uh, if we go back into Crimson, we look at look at another couple of things here to show you what's going on. All of these settings are obviously uh, defaults. So we didn't have to change any of these. On here, we just set the uh, port number, which again would normally be default. Timeouts you're going to leave as default. Device data allows you to push certain data relating to the status of the edge device, including location data and cellular data, if we have it. Um, this is pre-beta right now, so they're placeholders, really, as we add other stuff, another beep. And then we have up to four tag sets, and each tag set can contain any number of tags that we will push up, uh, and they can be transferred periodically, or they can be transferred on a trigger. We can set an update rate, in this case, 0.1 of a second, but only changed data will be sent, except after the force update period, at which point everything will be set. Now we're done initializing. We can put that down to zero. Although what you'll find then is that um, if it doesn't see data updates for a while, Kepler gets a little nervous and says the device is, the data is in doubtful state. Uh, so sometimes you can go in and set that to avoid that. Uh, and then there's various different ways, beep, 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 there's various different ways in which you can lay out the structure of the tags. You can have up to four tag sets, the idea being some of these uh, you'll want to update more frequently than others. Uh, some you'll want to allow rights, some you won't. Right now I haven't figured out how to get the uh, rights going from the um, 
Kepware client, but we'll do another video on that if I figure it out. But as you can see, pushing data from the edge uh, up into the broker and up into Kepware is pretty simple. So that's it. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.